Hello again, Andrew Coben here, board certified specialist in estate planning and probate law. And today I wanna to talk about powers of attorney. I'm gonna talk about a specific type of power of attorney. So there, there are healthcare powers of attorney. We'll, we'll address that in another episode. But today I wanna to focus on the financial power of attorney, um, the durable general power of attorney. Sometimes it's a durable specific power of attorney. They've got a bunch of names. We're gonna go ahead and dissect that a little bit talk about uh, what this power of attorney does, uh, its important uses, and some of the problems that, that come up with it. So uh, a power of attorney in itself is really just an instrument that names an agent and authorizes that agent to perform certain acts on your behalf. Uh, a general power of attorney is, a, is one that's drafted, that is uh, broad in nature, right? It's a general grant of authority, so it covers uh, a lot of things. And typically you want to draft those uh, general powers of attorney to be effective over everything that we need to do. Now you can tailor that, right? We can have something called a, a specific power of attorney. Most commonly we see those in instances of uh, you know, dealing with a particular institution or uh, dealing with a home closing. A lot of times we'll have a specific power of attorney that grants an agent just a specific set of powers as compared to a general power of attorney. Most of the power of attorneys that I draft our general powers of attorney, right? Because we're, we're doing estate planning, right? So we need to plan for if someone becomes incapacitated. And that general power of attorney is a really great tool because it helps us avoid any type of uh, court interference or court involvement if we become incapacitated. Now, there are a lot of studies out there. Uh, the one that I like to uh, point to, uh, which I think is a, a pretty legitimate study, is the Genworth study. And it shows that there's a greater likelihood than not by the time we reach the age of 65, that we'll experience some form of disability during our lifetime, right? Now, if that form of disability means that you can't manage your financial affairs, well, a power of attorney is a pretty simple tool to get into place to uh, appoint an agent and, and let that agent make those decisions for you, all right? So a uh, really important document, but not a fail-safe document, right? So. Uh, two of the biggest problems I see with powers of attorney, uh, the first one is institutions failure to recognize the powers of attorney, right? Now this isn't the case for, uh, most of the time, this is not the case for North Carolina institutions because North Carolina has, uh, laws on the book that basically says that, uh, you have to honor the power of attorney. And if you fail to honor the power of attorney, uh, you're, you're liable to that individual, and, and you could also be responsible for that individual's uh, attorney's fees for bringing an action uh, to get you to honor the power of attorney. Uh, but not everything we do is North Carolina, right? We might have dealings outside of North Carolina, right? We might be dealing with institutions that aren't in North Carolina, right? And not every state has that law in the books. And even though we have this law in the books, I still see it from time to time, uh, usually it's banks, that uh, are not willing to honor the power of attorney and you have to go through the rigmarole uh, to get them to, to do it. Um, and the reason for that, my opinion, the reason why institutions don't like powers of attorney because they are relatively new. I mean, they are, uh, as far as legal devices go, that they're sort of the new kids on the block. The liabilities aren't necessarily lined out. Uh, an example of this, um, you know, you bring the power of attorney to the bank and you say, hey, I'm, I'm dad's agent. Uh, I want to make a withdrawal from the account. And the teller looks up and in the back of the line is there's dad waving and saying, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Right. So it's unclear oftentimes to the banks and they will kind of default to not honoring it or making you jump through some hoops to show that this is genuine. This is particularly true with powers of attorney that are made effective upon disability. Right? Those are what we call springing powers of attorney. Right? So you can have a power of attorney that is effective immediately, or you can have a power of attorney that is effective upon disability. A lot of people like that, um, uh, like the idea of, of no one having this authority until I become disabled. The problem is that puts up some roadblocks for the agent. So the bank, for example, uh, I know I'm picking on them a lot, but uh, let's face it, that's the ones that are typically we're running into issues with. The bank, for example, will say, all right, I need a doctor's note because this power of attorney says it's only effective upon disability. And your agent brings forward the doctor's note and the bank says, okay, and, and bank does a transaction. And then two weeks later, the agent comes forward again and wishes to make a transaction. And the bank says, well, I need a doctor's note. 
And the agent said, well, I just gave you one two weeks ago. And the bank said, well, that was two weeks ago. What about today? Right? So, so we have problems with that. And, and kind of my recommendation to most clients is that, well, hey, if you don't trust the agent to have that authority while you still have capacity, well, maybe you should be checking or, or picking a different agent. All right, so that, that's kind of the way you look at it. But let's face it, not all the times do we have ideal agents and, uh, and we have different situations. So sometimes that springing power of attorney comes into play. The other big pitfall I see with powers of attorney really has to do with the agent's liability, right? So we've got this, uh, this, this gray wave with, with the boomers and everyone's retiring. Uh, and we're seeing more and more these powers of attorney being used and sometimes being abused. Or other times they're not necessarily being abused, but we've got uh, maybe a sibling who is uh, highly suspicious of what the brother or the sister is doing, right? And then all of a sudden we're, we're looking at, or are they following the rules, right? Are they meeting their obligations as the agent? And uh, that's, that's some tricky business, right? That, that's a growing area of litigation. Uh, this idea of being responsible as a fiduciary, right? As someone who has powers over someone else. Right, making sure you're you're keeping your accounting, making sure that you are, um, you know, managing the assets only in the interest of um, of the person who gave you the powers of attorney. Right, so, this, so that can bring rise to some litigation. So, so not a, a perfect thing, obviously, uh, but we're talking about dealing with incapacity, and that's not going to be a perfect situation. So you go with uh, what you know, and you go with the best that you can, and you try to draft around or. Uh, make exceptions for uh, things that might come up. And you always bear in mind that, you know, we can't stop someone from bringing a lawsuit, right? But we can situate uh, with the planning to make sure that that lawsuit would be unsuccessful uh, or, or maybe even with uh, other attorneys not willing to take on that client. So that's powers of attorney, a uh, really important tool. Um, everyone needs one of these. Everyone needs one of these because you just don't know it's going to come up. Um, and you don't want to be left necessarily uh, going to the court to ask for permission. So I hope that was helpful today. Uh, I hope you learned a thing or two, and uh, we'll be back at you again coming up here soon with some other estate planning topics. Thanks for joining us. If you liked what you heard today and found it as fascinating as I do, feel free to share it with a friend by clicking on the link below. Or if you'd like to learn more or speak with one of our qualified estate attorneys, visit us on the web at ncestateplanning.com. Thanks again for joining us and look forward to seeing you again soon.